Welcome. In this video, we'll see the unconditional branching instructions present in 8051. So the first instruction here is a call switch. So a switch is the name of a subroutine. So this a call instruction is used to call a subroutine. So here a stands for absolute. So uh, using this instruction, we can call a subroutine which is uh, placed in a memory space of two kilobytes. If the address of the subroutine is beyond two kilobyte memory range, then it cannot be accessed. So for that, we'll just check what is the address of this subroutine. So I have written the subroutine over here. So this is a switch subroutine, which is having the starting address as ORG810 hex. So this address is actually beyond the two kilobyte memory range. So for two kilobyte memory range, the address should be less than seven FF. So this address is beyond that. So if I try to build this program, I will get an error. So I will get the error as target out of range. So the meaning of this is that the a call instruction cannot call a subroutine which is placed beyond two kilobytes memory space. So let me change the address over here. So I will make it 710. So which will be uh, in the two kilobyte memory space. So now if I build this program, there are no errors and no warnings. So now I will go to debug. Now we can start debugging the program. So now if I execute this instruction, the program will jump to the subroutine that is switch. So this is the name of the subroutine switch. Uh, now the instructions will be uh, executed from this memory location onwards. So uh, I have written some random instructions over here. So these instructions will be executed and the next instruction is RET. So RET instruction is used to return from a subroutine to the main program. So whenever the subroutine ends at that time, the last instruction should be RET. It stands for return from subroutine. So from here, when this instruction is executed, the program counter will come back to the main program. So as you can see, it has executed this instruction uh, and it has executed the entire subroutine and now it has jumped to the next instruction. So uh, this a call switch instruction is of two bytes. One byte is required for the opcode and one byte is required for the uh, address. Uh, then next instruction is l call display. So here Again, this instruction is used to call a subroutine. Now here the name of subroutine I have taken as display. Now L stands for long. So using this L call instruction, we can jump anywhere in the 64 kilobytes of memory space. So the maximum capacity of memory that we can interface to 8051 is of 64 kilobytes. So using this L call instruction, we can jump in any memory location in this 64 kilobyte memory space. So if I execute this instruction, it will again jump to the subroutine, which is having the name as display. Then it will execute the instructions. So I have written some random instructions again over here. And the last instruction of this subroutine is again RET. So RET stands for return from subroutine. So this RET instruction is of one byte. It just requires an opcode for its representation. So when this instruction is executed, it will come back to the main program. This L call display instruction is of three bytes. One byte is required for the opcode and two bytes are required for the uh, address. Next instruction is a jump next. So here this is an again an unconditional jump instruction. So a stands for absolute. So using this instruction, we can jump anywhere in the two kilobyte memory space. So this next is the label. So when this instruction is executed, the program counter will jump to this label next. So this instruction is again of uh, two bytes. One byte is required for storing the opcode and one byte is required for storing the address. Next instruction is L jump next one. So again, this instruction is an unconditional branching instruction. Uh, using this instruction, we can jump anywhere in the 64 kilobytes of memory space. So again, L stands for long jump. We can jump in uh, 64 kilobytes of memory space. So if this instruction is executed, again, it will jump to the label next one. So it has jumped over here. 
So this LJump instruction is of three bytes. One byte is required for the opcode and two bytes are required for uh, the address. Next instruction is SJump. Uh, so this SJump instruction stands for short jump. So using this instruction, we can jump anywhere in the address space of uh, plus 127 to minus 128 locations. So this is the label next to so when this instruction is executed it will jump to the next to label so this label can be anywhere in the program for the sake of simplicity i have just taken it after this same instruction so this s jump next to instruction is again of two bytes one byte is required for storing the opcode and one byte is required for storing the address next instruction is jump at the rate a plus dptr so here the value present in accumulator will be added with value present in dptr and the program counter will jump to that location so let me put some value in accumulator for example 5 and let the dptr be 00 so the 0 plus 5 is 5 so at 5 hex memory location this instruction will jump so if i execute that it will come back to this location so this instruction is stored at 5 hex address location so that's why the program counter, counter has jumped over here so this instruction is of one byte it requires just an opcode for its representation and it is of register addressing mode next instruction is jz next so jz stands for jump if zero so if the value present in accumulator is zero only then the program counter will jump to the label next so right now the value in accumulator is 11 so let me make it uh, 0 0 so now this condition will be true and the program counter will jump to the label next which is over here so if i execute that it will come over here so this instruction is of two bytes so one byte is required for opcode and one byte is required for the address and this instruction is of direct addressing mode so the next instruction is jnz next one so the meaning of this instruction is that if the contents of accumulator are not equal to zero then the program counter will jump to the label next one so right now the contents of accumulator are not equal to zero it is 11 so it will jump to the label next one so if i execute this instruction it will go back to the label next one so this jnz instruction is of two bytes one byte is required for opcode and one byte is required for storing the address if suppose the value present in accumulator is uh, 0 then the instruction will become false and it will skip it will not jump to the label next one whereas it will execute the next instruction which is written in the program so out of all these instructions branching instructions the uh, last two instructions that is jz and jnz instructions are conditional jump instructions whereas other are unconditional branching instructions so this is about the branching instructions present in 8051 in the next video we'll see some more branching instructions based on some conditions for more information you can log on to the website given in the description of this video thank you